Thank you very much, and uh, it's a pleasure to be here. And before I uh, start, I want to say that in my 23 years as commissioner, we worked with the Boys and Girls Club of America, as everybody here knows. And um, the work that I saw being done all over this country is just remarkable. So I congratulate all of you tonight. It, uh, um, their work is just, it gets more amazing every year. Well, tonight I have the pleasure I think pleasure, I don't know, we'll decide that in a minute or two. <laughs> I've known um, Senator Cole for, I think, 72 or 73 years. <laughs> so in my notes that they gave me, which I just threw away, <laughs> they asked me to talk about some of the fun memories and things we've done. I couldn't do that after this beautiful evening. So <laughs> um, we um, went to grade school together went to junior high school together, went to high school together, college, and we were roommates in college. So yes, there's a lot of stories that I could tell you, but I think <laughs> they're better off left unsaid. But having said that, I, I know this is a wonderful award, very meaningful award. MVP is meaningful in everything we do, sports and everything else. And the one thing I want to say about Herb from the time that we were kids is he had this wonderful feeling of public service. He had the wonderful feeling that um, so many people um, have, but don't practice it as much as he has, in which he wanted to not only be a public servant, but to do good. And you know, I've often said, um, a lot of people in life, when it comes to these type of things, think it's their responsibility. I've always had another theory. It's their privilege. It's a privilege to be in a position to do this. And he recognized that from the time that we were really, really young kids. And so all the things that you've seen over the years, one can really safely say that Herb Cole made Milwaukee a better place to live. He went to Washington and did the other thing. So tonight, it is with great pleasure that I present to you the MVP award for this year to Senator Herb Cole. Uh, good evening, and what a pleasure and a privilege it is to be with all of you on this joyous occasion of celebrating the Boys and Girls Clubs of Greater Milwaukee and indeed of America. And I'm so honored also to be introduced by my lifelong friend, as Bud has said, uh, Bud Seely. And he, he has told you that we went through school here in Milwaukee. We both went to Sherman Elementary. We both went to Steuben Junior High. We both went to Washington High School. So we were educated here in the public schools of Milwaukee, and both of us feel that that had an enormous amount to do with the happiness and the success that we have enjoyed throughout our lives. Every friendship that has endured as long as ours has, over 70 years, as Bud has said, has its ups and downs. And I'd like to get something off my chest tonight. <laughs> Go back with me in the history books, because <laughs> very few of you are old enough to remember 1945. Well, in 1945, Bud and I were in the sixth grade at Sherman Elementary. And he was the captain of his baseball team, and I was the captain of my baseball team. So we were on a Saturday morning playing it off for the championship, and we both arrived with our teams at the playground at Sherman. And we started warming up, and all of a sudden, this big, big six foot two individual that I'd never seen before started warming up for Seelig's team. <laughs> and I said to him, Bud, who's this guy? 
And he said, well, just a kid from the, uh, from the neighborhood. I said, well, what happened to Lil' Freddie? We love Lil' Freddie, your pitcher. <laughs> and he tells me, Lil' Freddie couldn't come because he wouldn't drink his oranges in the morning. His mother wouldn't allow him to come. So we had a big argument, naturally. I didn't want to play. And he said, come on, let's play ball. And finally, I figured, what the hell, let's play ball. So sure enough, this fella, Jack Halser, comes out there, <laughs> and he pitches a no-hitter. <laughs> Struck out all 27 of our kids. <laughs> Selix team won nine to nothing. Jack Halser disappeared, and that's what happened that day, back in 1945. I've always wanted to get it off my chest. But there's more. <laughs> 50 years later, who becomes the commissioner of baseball? <laughs> Bud Selig. And what's his num what is his number one responsibility? To protect the integrity of the game. <laughs> now, Bud Selig, will tell you that Herb Cole is dreaming it's a fairy tale that never happened. <laughs> See? <laughs> but he and I have been great friends. You know, friendships of that sort don't occur every day. And they say a lot about people who are capable of maintaining and growing a friendship, irrespective of myself, but with respect for Bud. He has a capacity for friendship, capacity to care about other people, other men and women, and in our relationship, he has certainly demonstrated it. To me, time and time again, he's been a great friend. Back in the 1960s, when he was working so hard to successfully get us a baseball franchise, I would meet with him regularly at the old big boy restaurant out on South 108th Street. I would hear about his strategizing. I joined uh, the effort with him but he was the one who, of course, drove the process to a successful conclusion, and he was responsible for us having a baseball team in Milwaukee. <laughs> so thank you, but I'm honored that you're here. And finally, I'll tell you, I forgive you. <laughs> <laughs> but more than that, and of course, most importantly tonight, we're here to honor the Boys and Girls Club of Greater Milwaukee and our country. There are 44 locations of Boys and Girls Clubs here in the Greater Milwaukee area. And it has been said 5,000 young people go through the doors every day. And you can imagine how important that experience is to them. What a difference it makes in their life every day. And what a difference they make in our lives and will make in our lives in the years to come. Nothing is more important, as we know, than the education and the upbringing and the well-being of our young people. They are indeed our future. And if we do that well, our country will succeed. The Boys and Girls Clubs are dedicated to doing that just as well as can be done. And they do a magnificent job. I've always felt a debt of, a debt of gratitude and a great amount of unbelief in their ability to do good things with our young people. I cared about it when I was a senator. And back in 1996, I co-authored a law that made permanent funding at the federal level an event that occurs every year. And since 1996, the government, the federal government, has allocated over $1 billion to the Boys and Girls Clubs of America. <laughs> So we're all here tonight to express our amazement and our appreciation for what the Boys and Girls Clubs do and to express our appreciation and our hopes and our ambitions for the young people who use the Boys and Girls Clubs. We make a difference in their lives and there's nothing more important than that. It's good to be with you tonight. Thank you for coming and let's hope 
for better and better things from the Boys and Girls Clubs. Thank you so much.